X-Men. The X-Men arcade game, or as the Cross Media Bar refers to it as, X-Men, is a port of the 1992 beat-em-up arcade game for the PS3 and 360. It allows for up to six players to take the roles of Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler, Dazzler, Cyclops, and Colossus to defeat Magneto and his horde of evil minions, the ranks of which are filled with mud men, weird crocodile creatures, flower-lipped monsters, and mini sentinels. Why the hell is Magneto teaming up with any of these things? I have no idea, and I doubt the developers do either. But in any case, X-Men is a really simplistic brawler. There are no elaborate moves or combos, just hit a button to hit the enemy another to jump, and a third button to use a mutant power that takes your health. Storm shoots tornadoes, Nightcrawler teleports through people and hurts them somehow, Colossus uses his pimp rays, Dazzler bedazzles, Cyclops shoots lasers, and Wolverine shoots lasers. Wow. Okay, so here's the backstory real quick. When Konami made this game, their main source of reference material was not the original X-Men cartoon or the comics, but Pride of the X-Men, a pilot for an X-Men cartoon that never took off. In the case that ridiculous intro theme didn't already tell you, this pilot is hilariously bad. Magneto is shooting effing lasers in just about every scene, and Wolverine has an Australian accent. Welcome her white! She's not drawn in the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid! I'm not going to ruin any more of that for you. Go look it up. Seriously. It's great. So Konami, feeling as though Stanley didn't do a good enough job screwing up the X-Men universe with this pilot, decided to fuck it up even more. This ranges from why the hell does the Juggernaut have a bazooka to I can't believe he just said that. I am Magneto, Master of Magnet! Ha <laughs> X-Chicken, you are nothing! <laughs> Kill you! You are dead! <laughs> Back to the game. The port contains American and Japanese versions of the arcade game, which have some minor gameplay differences. Enemies drop items occasionally in the Japanese version. And by occasionally, I mean never. In the four times I've played through this game for this review, I've never once seen an item drop. It also has three different difficulties and allows for people to drop in and out at any time. The game's graphics haven't been improved or touched at all aside from the new character select screen and your HUD. As such, there are visual flaws that are kind of humorous to note, like these waves popping up with a black box. You just have to wonder how the hell that got past quality assurance. Oh wait, there wasn't a QA department according to the credits. But who needs a QA department when you have sound produce? I guess that's lettuce made of sound? I don't know. There's also a feature to enable a timer, but aside from the trophy that requires you to beat the game in 25 minutes, I really couldn't see anyone using it. Then again, the leaderboard says otherwise. Though I can't advise buying this game for a good beat-em-up experience, I would say that $10 is worth the price of entry for hearing all of the batshit insane English. <laughs> Between the hilarity and the nostalgia, this game is worth checking out. X-Men succeed to rescue Professor and return to Earth with the victory. Wow. For video reviews, quick plays, top 8s, and more, go to gigaboots.com.